Let's call it meandering, right? The market is meandering, which in ways are a lot better than up 500, down 500 in a blink of an eye. Nevertheless, you know, it feels kind of weird, right? A lot of people are wondering if this is the calm before the proverbial storm. Joining me now, Melissa Armo from Stocks Woo. Scott Martin's back with us as well. All right, folks, here's the one thing we do know. You don't have to be a technician to understand. This market is in a range. It is range-bound. The great news, it's held at the bottom more than once. It's held under tremendous pressure, but it's still lurking, Melissa, above that support area, making a lot of people nervous. Let's just talk about two scenarios. What if support doesn't hold? What if at some point we break through there? I'm okay with that as long as we hold a certain price support, which is not really where people are seeing where that bounce was. So, for example, in the Dow, it's really, for me, a gap down in the pre-market and open under 23,000. And that support is not there. That support is actually above that. But for me, it's 23,000. 23,000, though. So you're talking about another 1,500 points. Yeah. And, but I'm not saying that we go no, there No, we're talking sure. worst case, yeah, potentially worst case short term scenario. Wasted. But really, when you, what you said was great as far as we're stuck. It's almost like the market feels dead. Now, we've been talking about this. Are we going to have a Christmas rally? Here's my take on, here's my call for the end of the year right now because we're getting into it. I believe that the market is going to have a rally in the very tail end of the year. And what I, how I think this is all going to play out, and it literally could be like so, the last trading so day of the year. So instead of a St. Nick rally, a father it's time be a rally. New Year's Eve rally. A New, Year, a New yes. Year's Eve rally. Yeah. You know, Scott, what do, what do you make of it? Because, you know, we're getting a little bit of nibble here, uh, and, but... It, it, you know, for me, I think the idea that we've held support so many times is a great sign. Most of the guests that have come on and say, no, Charles, it just shows that inevitably it's going to fall apart. Well, so far, it's been a good sign, Charles, but the day is young, my friend. I mean, look, it may make a run at 2630 again today, which is kind of that low you guys just talked about in the S&P that needs to be defended. Otherwise, uh, and Michelle's right. Whether the in, whether the uh, the institutional investors will come in or the retail investors, that that's notwithstanding. I guarantee you, the machines are in there though, ready to hit this thing pretty hard if the S and P tries that level. Um, but to the point of you know a rally coming, I do believe there is one. But to you leading off here, I mean the cap on the rally is still probably just about. 2800 or so on the S&P, which we've seen are the recent highs that the market has trouble getting through. Well, what about so, but if we got through the recent highs, uh, you know, the series of lower highs that we're in a, a, a pretty ugly down channel. Does that mean at least we retest the all time high, Scott? We will probably go near there, uh, Charles. But I tell you, man, feeling this this recent high rejection that we've had in the S&P, I don't think we're going to get there. Um, I think it's going to take some time in the market psychology as you guys have probably spoken to many times in the last couple weeks, is not good. I mean, it's not that it's terrible. It's just that these high levels, whenever the market gets a nice rally behind it, whether it's one, two, or three days, as we've seen recently, there is a lot of selling pressure that's coming in, and I don't think that's going to wane anytime soon. Yeah, but it's, the, it's because no one has any reason to go back and long the market right now. Until these things get resolved with the China and the tariffs, the but, people are but, going to but go Melissa, long again. There are professional investors out there. Many of them, uh, the overwhelming majority of them, barely beat the market. So when there's a chance to buy stocks that are obviously oversold for, you know, for things that are going to ultimately be resolved. Don't you have somebody or some smart money making a move here and there? No, that's what that's why we're basing out here. If the smart money was coming in, we'd be back up already at the high. So as I was saying earlier, really quickly, I believe that we have a rally into the tail end of the year, and it could take us into the first part of January, February, maybe March, where we make new highs what earlier, names lead us earlier there? What than names, we think. What names would lead us there? We got to we got to have Am Amazon. Amazon actually looks the best of the worst in that in that sector right now, I would say. And Amazon already, like a whole lot of other stocks, have lowered their expectations. And to Melissa's point, Charles, Apple. How about Apple, guys? Apple, the bellwether for the stock market you know for so long, needs to start recovering here. Interesting today. Best Buy is down because of sluggish iPhone sales, but Apple has been up all day. Maybe all the bad news is baked into the stock. You know stock. what? Watch we'll Adobe. See. Watch Adobe go. tonight. Adobe, folks, reports after the bell. Liz Clayman.